Eli Palperman wins the battle on the boards. He's got a break, and the fry man finishes. Blake Levin's coming in. He fires, and it ends up on the stick of Eli Paul Freeman. He's got the first marker of the series. one nothing Dutchies after 20 minutes. You know, all the boys push together here. I mean, we've been struggling of late. I mean, we picked up a win against Calvin on Sunday. That's a big one for us. I think that's getting the ball rolling, and I think all, all the guys in that room are ready to go and make a push this second half. I 100% looked up to him in my early days and still do now, and obviously he had that impact on a lot of people. Just the good vibes he has when he comes in the room and the way he can bring someone up and just just make them laugh or put a smile on their face was something I, I really haven't seen in, in anyone else I've met. So. Like anyone with their kids, you brag about them and you know, you're half proud of them, that kind of stuff. But I had no idea what a big deal Eli was outside of our own home. So that was that makes us proud for sure. He got his love for hockey probably from his papa. Um, his papa bought him his first pair of skates so and took him to the pond and um you know so we started there skating on, on odrs we signed him up for mini max which is like learn to skate and uh it was funny uh you know just watching the struggle just learning how to skate and then from there house league then his first select team and then uh just moved up the ranks um you know playing triple a in Brantford, and then eventually going to cambridge and uh, playing for the Cambridge Hawks, being coached by Scott Walker. It was the right group of kids, it was the right group of parents, and it was the right coaching. Uh, you know, we'll give Scott Walker a lot of credit for turning Eli into like a hockey player, right? I, I have a lot of friends that have young kids and I always tell them the same thing. You wanna to go to a team that has good coaching. That's, that's the key. Bantam, we won the uh, All-Alliance and Eli probably was it's an incredible playoff run. He was definitely top two or three in scoring on the team through the whole playoff run, and then he just carried that over into minor midget and then got drafted by the Peets. I think a few days before the draft, he had, uh, I know Sarnia had reached out, and North Bay had reached out, Peterborough had reached out. There's probably a handful of teams that reached out, but I mean, we're sitting right there on that couch following the computer the whole day, hours and hours, and then uh, he finally got drafted. It was pretty exciting. <laughs> Yep, 16-year-old Yeri played junior hockey in Pelham, uh, came back home midway through the year, uh, went to Victus Academy, private hockey school. Uh, 17 years old, he signed with the Dutchies. Um, a more great coaching and a great big no. Fantastic team, and of course, COVID cut that season short. That was the team. That was the team that, uh, that could have won it all. So anyone who knew Eli knew that the kid could not sit still, right? Like, he had to be doing something, and... You know, it was in early COVID stages where you were locked in your house, you know, there's nothing to do. And, uh, you know, news had kind of leaked that uh, another season was going to be canceled. And Eli sat upstairs in the computer and reached out to every team in the States that was playing hockey. He probably got offers from like 20 teams. But, but uh, he picked Atlanta because he wanted to wear shorts. He wanted to go somewhere where it was warm. <laughs> so that's how he ended up in Atlanta. <laughs> getting drafted to the Peets, you know, attending several Peets camps and uh, have an opportunity to sign with London Knights, but he, he turned it down to uh, to play junior in air eventually. At his last camp from the Peets, he got cut and uh, Dale Hunter called him. He said, come out and practice with us. And he practiced with them and uh, they offered to sign him to a 10-gamer. And he was like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'll just, uh, if I sign for a 10-gamer, then I blow all my D1 opportunities away. We just left him on his own to make his own decision. I was kind of surprised he, you know, kind of let it go. He didn't want to play there. I was shocked, actually. Um, and I was kind of proud of him because he really <coughs> wanted to go D1 somewhere and play in the States. So why mm -hmm. turn down the opportunity? Because if you play in the States, you can play, unlike Canada, 
you can play until you're like 24, yeah. 25, I think, yeah. like a lot as older, as, as long as you're going to school. So there's a lot more opportunities and he had realized that and he had wished he went school route instead of the right OHL the route right from the start. And he had realized that a little bit too late. And I think that would be our advice to other parents. After playing in Atlanta, love the States, just loved it. You want to go down to the States. <laughs>loved all the guys on the Dutchies last year. Uh, the guys coming back, I'm super excited to play with them. I feel we had a team who could go pretty deep last year. Um, we had the guys to do it. We had the tight group. And I mean, we have a lot of core guys coming back this year. We've added some key assets to our team. So I feel we could really go for a deep Southie run. Air had always been chasing them to play there. They were junior C prior, right? Like they had just purchased the Dutchman actually to become a junior B team. So when he finally came back there, he was older. The, the organization really wanted him there. He was named the assistant captain. It was basically a, a fresh franchise going into Junior B. But during that first year that he played there, he showed really good leadership. Like Eli was always really kind to other players and no matter how far they were down in points or in games lost, he always was cheering everybody on. Or if you were the new kid coming on the team, he was you know, introducing you to everybody or making you feel like you belong. So he had good qualities of a good leader. Because he had such a hard time when he was 16 in junior hockey. You know, when you're 16, it's, it's not easy walking into a dressing room with 20 year olds, right? So his thing was he wanted to make sure that no other 16 year olds or rookies were treated the way that he was treated when he was 16. Yeah. I don't think I've met a, a kid who doesn't respect him or doesn't look up to him. Uh, who has at least been younger than him. And he's just, just the way he, he enters a room and and talks to you with, with respect. It doesn't matter who you are. Like He's just a, a classy, classy guy with, with a big voice, and he's not afraid to use it. Well, I'm honored uh, to announce today that uh, this year's captain is going to be Eli Palferman. Eli was really, really excited to be named captain. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> like super excited. He felt really honored. Um, very proud. Yeah, really proud. Personally, I know he was very honored to get to get the the C and Air for that for that last year's twenty years. So he was super excited. I know all the guys there, all the younger guys, really looked up to him as as a leader and someone when when they when he talks, like they're listening. If you didn't know Eli, maybe you thought he had a big head, but he was very down to earth and natural leader. Yeah, I just thought this was great and um, smiling ear to ear about it. So this tournament came up just shortly a few days after he was named captain and it was the first time they had held this tournament. So there's teams from Boston, Germany. It was quite a big tournament and he was excited to play in it. Like just challenged himself to play against some of the American and European teams to see how they would do and see how the boys would do. So during his last game, he had won like MVP, I think the game before. The first game of the tournament. Yeah, the first game of the tournament. Um, and that game he did like the puck drop, like normal, smiling ear to ear. Played um, really good, had some great hits um, hitting around against the boards. Um, that was during the first period. It's a little bit kind of blurry to me that day. Mm -hmm. After, the, like, between the second and third, one of his players um, got hurt, and Eli stayed on the ice and was yelling with the refs, like, should have been a penalty, and kind of arguing with them and was really heated and mad and helped his uh, teammate up who was very young at the time. He went into the dressing room and apologized to the coaches for getting a penalty because he was yeah. at the refs. gave him a 10 minute. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the coaches were like, don't worry about it, like you were defending your play player and whatnot. He got up and he just like passed out in the room and like that was, he just passed collapsed. away instantly, yeah. And it's just a one in a billion. Nobody knows why, and that was it. I remember getting a text from my my father saying, um, like he had uh, 
passed out or something like that. And I obviously was like scared, but I wasn't thinking the worst, obviously, at the time. And then I think like 30 minutes went by. I sent him a text at the time, like just thinking of you, like, how are you doing? But I didn't remember getting a phone call from my, my dad and I went to my room and I just, it just collapsed, man. You don't even know what, what to what to think at the time or what to do, but yeah, definitely, definitely one of the darkest moments of my life so far. This is his stick, his last game stick. Oh, wow. And his uh, buddy on the team, so he had a rookie that would tape his sticks for him, so after he passed away, he taped it one last time. This is a little creepy, but this is the jersey he wore when he collapsed. When he passed away. And you can, this is, they cut it off, all right, so they can do some life-saving measures, but this is... This is his last, his last jersey that we have. So this one's special. Mm -hmm. That one's a special one. Still, that one smells like him for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All his jerseys, yeah, that he had. Well, if you're going to ask what his favorite jersey was, I'll show you right now. That's a nice jersey. All from in 2018. This draft drafted. jersey. Oh, oh nice. Right. This is his last game, so this was. That's an hour before he passed away. Yeah. A smile on his face. Yeah. Yeah, healthy as right. You wouldn't know anything's going on, right? An hour before he passed away. The hockey community in air is just really a great organization, a great group of people, and they've really surrounded us with love. And the community itself of air has surrounded us with love. And we realize that even the teams around here have really been supportive of us and our family. And <clears throat> even Germany, like I don't know if you guys have ever seen like even the logo, but they have that sewn on the back of their jerseys. <laughs> yeah, that started after Eli passed away and they um, came, they ha always hung up Eli's jersey as if he was still the captain always um, on the on the bench and then after they won they would come to the glass and cheer with us and even though Eli's captain would be over as of last year the boys always continue to come over and cheer with us on the glass which is heartwarming and we love it and it makes us feel like he's still there it's amazing the positive if you can say that as how many lives he affected so for us we didn't realize you know you're hard on your kids and you teach them stuff and you don't know if they're listening we've got probably over hundreds of messages mm -hmm. and stories from adults and kids telling us how our son made their life better and we didn't know that before mm -hmm. and that is a positive that we were like wow we raised this amazing human being who made other people's lives better in some way or enriched it or did good things that we had no idea about you know people send me pictures they have full sleeves of tattoos and not just one or two it's insane <laughs> like the stories that people and people just they will randomly message me and say i think you should know this about your son or nice stories that he did and that's just really heartwarming yeah. this was this box here we got that from um air on eli's birthday and in the book every teammate wrote a little story about eli for his birthday uh, there's pictures a lot of pictures <laughs> Like when your bill at Zach Zandu came to air, he was 15 year old making the jump from minor hockey to junior. Eli took Zach under his wing. Whew, that's tough to read. <laughs> Oof. I read. <laughs> when our bill at Zach Sandu came to air, he was 15 years old making the junior, oh, from minor hockey to junior. Eli took Zach under his wing and made him feel right at home because that's what Eli did. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Every year um, for the Air Centennials, a player will be picked um, based on that they have the same qualities um, that Eli had. So they will get $1,717.17 <laughs> toward a scholarship like or school. They'll get a check, and um, it'll be picked between me and my husband and Ella, his sister. And we do some fundraising every year, but um, there's been some amazing donations into the scholarship fund, so it's 
really built up and it'll last for a lot of years. There's also the Eli Palferman uh, Invitational, which is the global tournament. We have teams coming from the U.S. and Europe, and Canada, and playing, and that will happen every year. And that's a beautiful thing too that they do. He donated. We didn't know. We had no idea. We had no idea, <laughs> and that's what a giver Eli was. We had got a call just after um, we had left the hospital, letting us know that Eli had filled everything out on his own, and that didn't tell us nothing. <laughs> yeah, didn't tell us, and yeah, the we have the little coin up there as a thank you from the donation. That yeah, Eli would be helping save other people's lives, which is a typical Eli thing. He's <laughs> still helping even after he's gone. Eli said to me two weeks before he passed away, he said, Mom, you can lay on the floor and let things, you know, keep you down or you can pick yourself back up and keep going and make them realize what people missed out. And I was like, you know, right, that's good advice, bud.